Hello everybody. Just got back from Gen Con, had a great time, and I just wanted to do this quick review on a game that I got at Gen Con and let you know whether I liked it or not. And the game is Bloodborne, the card game. This is a very popular game at Gen Con. I saw a lot of people playing it. I picked up a copy and um, I'll let you know what I think. First of all, Bloodborne is a game put out by Cool Mini or Not. Uh, it's based on a PlayStation IP and uh, it was designed by Eric Lang and Eric Lang is a great designer. The game plays three to five players. It was interesting because the box says two to five players but there was a sticker on the packaging that said three to five so they must have uh, changed their mind. Um, I think the book actually says three to five so it must just it may have just been a misprint on the box. Uh, 14 plus 30 to 60 minutes we played it a couple times and it took about uh, 45 to minutes to an hour to play. In Bloodborne, the game, you receive a rule book, which is a very nice rule book. There are a couple of things in the rule book that are, aren't specifically clear, but if you read them a few times, um, it pretty much makes sense. Uh, we had some um, arguments over the rules a little bit when we played, but uh, I think we figured them out, and I think we played it correctly. There's a player board for each player. Um, it allows you to uh, collect your blood echoes here that you receive during the game but any blood echoes that you put here they're potentially lost if you die so there's a place also down here to bank your blood echoes so once you um, go into the uh, dreamscape and um, then you can bank your blood echoes here and um, then they're safe for the rest of the game you also have a trophy track here on this side and you have three different types of trophies as you gain trophies from uh, participating in battles that kill monsters, you're going to move up the trophy track and the trophy track increases in value. Uh, it doesn't just go one, two, three, four, five, it goes one, two, three, five, eight. And so the more trophies you get in a specific area, the more points you get at the end of the game. You get points for each one of these uh, tracks at the end of the game. Each player also gets a life counter that keeps track of your life. This life counter goes from uh, zero to eight and um, you'll spend a lot of time turning this life counter. In this game you get hit a lot from the monsters. You also receive tokens that represent blood echoes. You have the one tokens and the five tokens and um, when you collect blood e echoes you will put these into your reserve and then eventually bank them. You also get three dice for the monsters. You get a red dice, a green dice, and a yellow dice. Each monster has a color-coded area on their card, and it represents which dice you roll for their attacks. Uh, some dice are more dangerous than others. The red dice is very dangerous. The yellow dice is um, a little less dangerous, but still dangerous, and the green dice is the least dangerous. On the dice, you will have dice that have numbers on them so this one has a one but it also has a plus on it this one has a one with no plus so if you roll the one with the plus you roll again and then if you roll another plus you roll again and you keep rolling until you have no plus and then you add up all the numbers so you could with this green dice you could get easily get a two for damage or you could do one plus one plus one plus two and end up with five damage. So it, it kind of the damage escalates when the monsters are attacking you. You have a token for each one of the trophy types. These tokens go on your trophy board and you move the token as you gain trophies throughout the game. There are also final boss cards. These final boss cards are the end of the game boss cards. There are five of them and you choose one at random for a game. So let's say we're playing a game, we would choose one final boss card at random. You actually place that final boss card face up and you read the text on that final boss card and that text will affect the entire game that you're playing. So that's kind of a global effect that affects the game. In the game there are also standard monsters. Standard mo monsters are um, easier to defeat than boss and final boss monsters and the standard monsters will try to escape. They are afraid of you and they try to run away so you only get one round to try to knock them out. You count out seven of these regular monsters and you place them in a stack. 
face down. Then you have boss monsters. These boss monsters are a little tougher than the standard monsters, but they're not as tough as a final boss monster. When playing the game, you randomly select three boss monsters and you place them in that stack. Once you have your boss monsters and your standard monsters selected, you shuffle them up and you make a face down stack where everybody can get to them. Each player is going to receive five cards to start the game. These are five starter cards that every player gets. They get some weapons. They receive a hunter's axe, which is a melee weapon. It does two damage to a monster. They receive a saw cleaver, which is a melee weapon, which does one damage to a monster. They receive a hunter's pistol. This is a ranged weapon, and it does one damage to a monster. Ranged weapons are different from melee weapons, and they have usually have special text, and you follow the special text. Ranged weapons do different things depending on the weapon. You also receive the transform card, and the transfer card is a card that lets you play this card and not play a weapon, and then after you see what everybody else plays, then you can transform it into a weapon. You have to play a weapon. You cannot play any other card after the transform card, but a weapon, but it does give you an advantage in the fight because you know what other people are doing. And then you have the Hunter's Dream card, which allows you to go into the Hunter's Dream. When you go into the Hunter's Dream, it's going to allow you to bank those blood shards that you have in your pool, put them in your kind of safe zone down here, and that way you don't have to worry about losing them if you die. When you go into the Hunter's Dream, you also go back up to full health, and you get to choose an upgrade card. So there's a market deck that comes with the game which has all kinds of unique weapons. You shuffle the market deck. So you place the market deck down where everybody can get to it and then you draw one card for each player. So in a three player game you would draw three cards. When somebody enters the hunter's dream they will put their life back to eight life. They will bank all of their blood and they will pick a card from the showing cards in the market deck. That card will go into your hand and then you will also retrieve all the cards that you've played that turn. You count your cards. If you have seven cards or less, you're fine. You, you, then you go to the next round. If you have more than seven cards, you must discard one of the cards from your hand. So you can only have seven cards at any given time. Once the Hunter's Dream phase is finished, then you refill the market. Now, if there's three players in the Hunter's Dream, then the, the first player, whoever's the first player, gets to take the first item, the second player gets to take one of the remaining items, and then the third player actually has to take whatever is left. So it, it is important who is the first player in this game. So when you start the game, you give somebody the first player marker. This is the marker that Cool Mini or Not gives you for the first player, and I find it kind of ironic that a company who makes miniatures um, as their basis for their company gives you a cardboard stand-up for the miniature that would have been very easy to put a regular figure, a plastic figure in here for this figure. So in essence, when we say cool mini or not, this is the not right here, not a cool mini. Okay, so how the game plays, it's a very simple game. Um, what you do to start the game, and this is all on your player board. The first thing you do is choose and play action cards. Um, if there's no monster out, the first thing you do before that is you just place a monster. Some of the monsters have reveal effects, so you do what the reveal effect says. Some of the monsters have effects that happen during gameplay. Uh, some of the monsters have effects if somebody attacks them, so you have to kind of read the text on the monster. Once the monster is out in play, then each person uh, plays an action card. The action cards are played face down by each player. The action cards are revealed, and then you move on to the next phase. Uh, the next phase is transform weapons. So if anybody played a transform weapon card, then you pick up that card and you play the weapon that you would like to play. 
The next phase is the resolve instant effects. If any cards have instant effects on them, then you go ahead and you resolve that item. Some of the ranged weapons say that you get to go ahead and do damage to the monster now. Usually you don't get to do damage until after the monster takes its turn, but uh, some of them allow you to do that ahead of time. Then the monster attacks, so the first player, whoever is the first player, looks at the monster card, and if you see on this monster card we have a yellow symbol, so I would roll the yellow dice. I got a one, no pluses, so one would be the damage, so everybody at the table would take their marker and go down one, so everybody would take one damage. At this point, if anybody dies, then they're out of the round, and they would automatically go into the hunter's dream at the end of the round. If you die during a round, then you go into the hunter's dream, you lose all the blood that you do not have bank. That actually gets put back in the box. You do get to take your person back up to eight, and um, you do get to pick up card from the market, but you do not get to pick up all your cards you played. So at that point, you would have to wait and play the hunter's dream again in order to get your cards back. So. After the, the monster takes its turn, then the hunters attack, starting with the first player. You do the damage that it says on the uh, card. When you put out a monster, you put out the blood tokens on the monster, however many that the monster required. So let's say this monster required eight blood tokens. We would put eight blood tokens here. And then we would go around the table, starting with the first player. And let's say I did one damage, I would take one blood token and I would put it in my unbanked blood area. The next player would go, let's say they did two, they would take two and the next player would take the amount of blood tokens that, that they require. If we remove all the blood tokens from the creature, the, the creature is killed. If the creature is killed and we took a blood token from that creature, then we get to take a trophy and this, this creature has uh, two trophy, trophies, it has the worm and the claw, so then we would move our tokens up on our track, one, wor one worm and one claw. Okay? This is a boss monster. If we had not killed this monster during the round, then we would start a new round with the same monster, and we would go until this monster was dead. If this was a regular monster, then this monster would escape at the end of the round, it would go into a discard pile, nobody would get any trophies because the monster escaped. So the next round is the monster escape round where if your monster is going to escape, it would escape at that point. Uh, the next round is the hunter's dream. Anybody who played a hunter's dream or anybody who died during the round would go into the hunter's dream phase. Um, if you played the card, you would bank your blood, put it down to the bottom. You would also take yourself back up to eight. You would also get all of your cards back and you would also take a card from the market. If you died during the round, you would discard your blood. You would go up to eight. You would take a card from the market, but you would not take your played cards during the round. So this is an important thing. When you play a card, you place it down on the table. Um, that card cannot be played again until you go into the Hunter's Dream and take all your cards back. So this is a uh, retrieval game where you play cards. So you're kind of pushing your luck on your cards. You get to a round, I really have nothing to play, so I'm going to play the Hunter's Dream and I'm going to get my cards back. Sometimes it's a push your luck on your life. Um, I'm getting close to death. I don't want to die because I want to bank all this gold. So I'm going to play the Hunter's Dream and reset my life. Okay? And that's pretty much the game. You play all the way through until this stack is empty, um, killing bosses and standard monsters, standard monsters escaping if uh, you don't kill them, remembering that you have to do damage or take blood from the monster in order to get the trophies. Then once you get done with this stack, then you go to the final boss. You beat the final boss in the same way. It does not run away. It does not escape, so you have to fight it until you beat it. Once that's done and the game is over, you bank any remaining blood that you may have. You count up all your blood tokens. You count up any points that you have on the trophy track. And then at that point, whoever has the most points is the winner. I really like this game. It was fun. It had a lot of tension. And you die all the time. 
Now, I don't play uh, Bloodborne, but my son absolutely loves Bloodborne. It's his favorite game in the whole world, and I've gone over to his house, and I've watched him play, and he's let me play. I've, I've tried it. I, I played for about five seconds and died, so um, I, I'm no good at that game, and I've seen my son die over and over and over again. In fact, we bought him a poster that said, uh, Bloodborne, prepare to die again and again and again and again. And this game really gives you that feel. Eric Lang did an excellent job of kind of encompassing that, you know, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die, because you die all the time. I think the hard thing for some of the gamers that I play with is in most games, if you die, you're done. You lose. You're out. It's a bad thing. In this game, it's not that bad of a thing. Actually, when you die, you actually get to upgrade your character by taking something from the market. So, in essence, um, dying actually helps you to get better in this game. But you will die a lot. You die, 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 and if that's hard for you to handle, um, then this is not the game for you. In fact, you have to kind of get it in your head that dying is not the end of the world in this game. I, um, I died several times and won this game. Um, so dying is just a part of this game, and I think that's because in the video game, dying is a big part of the game. I liked the game. I thought it was a good game. I didn't think it was a great game. I didn't say, whoa, I've never played anything like this before. Um, I kind of felt like uh, the taking the tokens off of the monster kind of reminded me of Dungeon Dwellers, which uh, is one of my favorite games. And so uh, it kind of reminded me of that, but that actually kind of made me like the game because I, I love Dungeon Dwellers. So, okay. So let's start with the things that I didn't like about the game. So the first thing I didn't like about the game was this miniature. I felt like Cool Mini or Not could have put a cool miniature in here, a plastic miniature as the first player token. And um, that would have really, for a very small price, upgraded the quality of this game. Another thing that I didn't like about the game was the actual insert for the game. The insert is not set up for sleeve cards. I like to sleeve my cards, so in order to use this insert with sleeve cards, I would have to actually remove this insert altogether. And the insert's really nice. The insert's set up to hold everything very nicely within the insert as long as you don't sleeve your cards. So I didn't care for that. I also didn't care for the fact that the boss monsters used an odd card size. I think this is a tarot size card, but I'm not for sure that it's a standard tarot size card so it would take an odd sleeve to sleeve this card. So what did I like about the game? Well I really like the components of the boards here and the blood echoes that they give you in the game. I like the spinners they work really well and work, work very well. The quality of the cards is about midline quality it's not super high quality but it's not low quality either um, it is not a deck building game so you're not shuffling all the time so uh, I think the cards will hold up to normal wear but I still like to sleeve my cards because I'm afraid if somebody spills something on the table or something I'd like to have it sleeved. Um, I like the actual gameplay I thought the gameplay was very good I thought that it really encompassed uh, the video game and the way you die all the time and I thought it was a really good game. I liked the game. I thought it was a real good game. If you think it sounds like a good game, check it out and I'll see you next time in another review. So have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Bye bye.